Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you, depending on where you live around the globe. Welcome to the official Marina launch event. We are really pleased to have you join us today. My name is Veronica, I'm communications manager at Marina, and I will be one of your hosts today. We have a lot to share with you today, and we couldn't be more excited. Whether you are watching this event live or recorded, we thank you for being here. At the end of the presentation, we will host a Q&A session to answer questions, so don't be shy and feel free to ask questions along the way. To ask a question, please use the chat where you are watching this live stream. But let's get going. Your online privacy is under attack daily, and we want to help you to do something about it. Our goal at Marina is simple. We want to keep you safe from digital surveillance and help you regain control over your data. In today's live stream, we want to show you how your privacy is at risk and what we can offer to regain protection for your data. First, let's understand the magnitude of the problem. Let's welcome Alexim, CEO at Marina, and ask him more details about digital surveillance on the phone. Thank you, Veronica. Today, 98% of the smartphones commonly used present serious issues for your privacy. The operating system, the applications you have installed, the online services you use are after your data. In the background, they log every tap, every swipe, every action on the phone to profile you. This happens even if you try opting out of this data collection. All this information is assembled to create a digital profile of your persona that can be sold to the highest bidder. This is called micro-targeting, and there's a multi-billion dollar industry that has been created on top of this and that is thriving today. Most smartphone brands spend millions in advertising to make you believe that they protect your privacy. But many independent researchers have confirmed that this is purely an illusion. For example, mobile operating systems are leaking a vast amount of data outside of their environments, presenting serious risks to user data privacy. In 2018, a research conducted by Professor Douglas C. Schmidt at the Vanderbilt University highlighted that, I quote, the extent and magnitude of Google's passive data collection has been largely overlooked. According to the research, on a typical day, a Google Android smartphone will send home to Google servers an average of 11.6 megabytes of user data. Even an Apple iPhone sends several megabytes of data daily to Google. The data collected by Google from a smartphone is quite extensive, ranging from your Play Store usage, which apps you download, when, your Google search history, your Google browsing history, your YouTube usage, what videos you watch, when, your Google Maps usage, where you are, where you're located, where you're navigating to, the application's metadata, so how you use third-party Android apps and how efficient are the ads included there, the sensor data, the voice commands, and precise activity-based location, if you're standing, walking in a car, for example. Worst, when the device is offline or in airplane mode, the historical data is recorded, cached, and sent to Google servers when the smartphone connects again to the internet. In short, Google knows where you are using GPS, carrier, and Wi-Fi triangulation, it knows who you are by combining the Android device ID and the Google Play ID. And finally, it knows what you're doing with your applications you use and what you do with each of them. In 2021, another research led by the Trinity College of Dublin and the University of Edinburgh found staggering issues with most common smartphone brands like Samsung, Realme, or Huawei. The researchers found that, I quote, even when minimally configured and the handset is idle, these vendor-customized Android variants transmit substantial amount of information to the operating system, the developer, and also to third parties that have pre-installed apps, like Google, Microsoft, LinkedIn, or Facebook. The observed data transmission goes well beyond this and raises a number of privacy concerns. The same universities published a follow-up study on several phones with Google Android in 2022. This research focused on specific Google Android default apps, like Messages and Dialer. 
The research revealed that Google knows whenever a message is sent or received, or whenever a call is made or received, and that unique identifiers allow Google to discover whether two headsets are communicating, and at what times. When you put all these studies together, it is clear that there is no escape today from this digital surveillance. It is staggering to see how the existing ecosystem is broken and that our personal data and privacy are in danger. It is time for a paradigm shift. And this is where Marina comes in. Thank you, Alexei. Well, these are chilling discoveries that many of us might not know. Now I'd like to welcome Gail, Marina's CEO, to tell us more about Marina and how we solve this issue. At Marina, we believe that micro-targeting should be banned and that anyone should be able to use a smartphone without fearing for their personal data. We want to protect you from digital surveillance with smartphones and online services free from tracking while remaining fully usable and auditable. First, our ecosystem is built upon privacy by design. We don't log your activity, we don't track your location, we don't create user profiles to sell to the highest bidder. In fact, our business model is different from the big techs. Our revenue doesn't come from advertising or selling your data. Our revenue only comes from hardware sales and online services subscriptions, period. Second, at Marena, we made the choice to develop our ecosystem using only open source software. Open source is a great way to offer the best transparency possible as the source code is fully auditable. This means that researchers, developers, anyone can check our source code and challenge our claims. In fact, they already do and confirm that our operating system sends no information to Google or any other third parties and sends essentially no information to our developers. In other words, we cannot hide. Thank you, Gail. Let's welcome Odd, our product manager at Marina. Odd, tell us more about EOS, the core of Marina. At the center of Murena, there is EOS, our open source operating system, fully compatible with the Android application ecosystem. EOS doesn't capture any user logs, app usage, or track user location. It is free from Google mobile services and doesn't send any information to Google servers. We want EOS to be simple to use and simple to master. We want to ensure you can make the most of your phone from day one. EOS comes with essential default apps built upon open source bricks, so you don't have to lose hours finding apps that match your needs. It includes mail, calendar, an ad-free browser, camera, gallery, messaging, navigation, calculator, clock, contacts, file manager, notes, tasks, and a recorder. These apps are there to make your life simple and are fully integrated with the system. For the maximum convenience, the operating system lets you run any Android app by default, so in the end, you don't have to trade off your privacy for usability. We already have dozens thousands of daily users and they love the simplicity of the operating system. Before we dive deeper in EOS, let's have a chat with Handros, our design lead, so he can tell us more about privacy by design and the user experience in EOS. A lot of companies today base their design decisions on heat maps and analytics tools, which are designed to collecting user data, basically. And this raises some privacy concerns because uh, these companies are literally watching and recording what their users are doing without them knowing it. So we really believe understanding uh, user behavior is key to providing great user experience, but this doesn't really have to be at the cost of user privacy. So we do it in a different way here at Morino. We give uh, user feedback maximum importance. So our design decisions are always based on uh, real user needs, not user data. Uh, so we keep in touch with our users. Um, 
to better understand their necessities, their desires, and their abilities. If you take a look at one uh, Morina phone, you will notice uh, immediately that it doesn't look like a regular Android phone. And uh, most importantly, it doesn't behave like a common phone. Uh, everything is uh, carefully thought and designed uh, in order to provide great user experience and uh, making privacy easier and more accessible for people. So how does EOS and the default apps look? EOS is organized with the home screen that you can organize by pages. You can drag and drop apps to locate them on the page you want, or you can combine them in groups too. The operating system also includes a widgets panel, where you can see the weather or access app shortcuts. You can customize your home screen with some great looking wallpapers to make your phone more personal. EOS comes with a calendar app. It will let you organize your agenda with different views, so you stay in control of your schedule. Let's check the Mail app. Mail will let you manage your email accounts. I can connect my Marina.io email account or even other providers. It has a simple and user-friendly interface. It also supports email encryption by default with built-in OpenPGP support. Now, if we move to maps and navigation, we all know how important it is to travel from one place to another, safely and in control. Whether you ride a public bus, walk or take your car, you want to have proper directions to get to your destination. EOS comes with a great navigation app. It's based on OpenStreetMap, a collaborative map provider. The app includes turn-by-turn -turn navigation, traffic alerts, and can even be used as a dashcam. EOS also includes a browser that comes with an ad blocker by default to make sure that your browsing experience is free from ads. Within browser, you have the option to conveniently select your preferred search engine. You can choose Spot, our own meta search engine that combines results from other search engines, or other privacy-based engines like DuckDuckGo, Quant, and more to come in the future. All default apps on EOS are free from ads and are privacy-friendly. Thank you, Rand Rose, for this overview. As we mentioned before, EOS is compatible with the Android application ecosystem. So, we have an application installer that lets you search and download all the applications you want directly from the smartphone. We call it App Lounge. It connects you to millions of Android apps, but not only. It also includes progressive web apps and even open source applications all in one place. App Lounge is free from advertising or any logging activity. Like with the operating system, we don't log your activity nor which apps you download nor which apps you use. But we wanted to do more than just give you access to applications. In App Lounge, you will be able to check apps for privacy. Android applications often come with embedded trackers. Trackers are pieces of software meant to collect data about you or what you do. Trackers can access data within the app you installed, but also across the whole operating system. They can record your activity in the background without you knowing. In App Launch, each application gets a privacy score. The score is a rating on a scale from 10 to 0, 0 being the lowest, combined with a color code from green to red, so it is easy to understand. Scoring is based on two criteria, the number of trackers and the number of permissions. The scoring is transparent and meant to give you a snap of privacy risks before you install your favorite application. Think about the privacy score as a similar tool as a food label or an energy efficiency label. App Lounge is very easy to use. You will find key apps ranked on the home page where you will be able to find most popular apps or games. The search bar will give you the option to find an app by typing its name. 
Let's say I'm looking for the Subway Surfers game. I simply type Subway Surfers in the search bar and I can find it easily. Once I open the application page, I can find a quick summary from the app developer and some screenshots from the app itself. I can also see the app privacy score. This app has been rated 0 out of 10. As we said before, the privacy score is computed using a mix of the permissions the app needs to run and the number of hidden trackers that are coming with the app. Let's see how many trackers are within this app. Oh boy, the list isn't short. You get the point. To install the app, just tap on install and that's it. In a few seconds, this app will be on your phone. AppLaunch gives you access to common applications, but you can also select to only access progressive web apps or even only open source apps, which most often comes with no trackers at all. As you can see, it is quite easy to search and install applications on your Marina phone. But at the same time, I guess it is clear also now that most apps aren't clean to start with and that many are created to snoop around and capture additional data about you. We could have left this the way it is, inform you about what is hidden in apps and stop there. This is always better than nothing. But we wanted to do more. In the US, we are now shipping advanced privacy. Advanced privacy is a specific tool developed to limit your data exposure once you have installed third-party apps on your devices. When an application snoops in the background, it will use trackers to log your activity, even if you are not using the app. It will collect your internet address, also known as IP address, so it can link your internet activity to your device and to your persona. And finally, it will try to pinpoint your location. Advanced privacy enables you to manage in-app trackers IP address and location. Advanced privacy can be found in the settings menu. On the main page, you will see in real time your personal data leakage. You can see a summary letting you know if trackers are active, if your real location or your IP address are exposed. You will also see stats showing your app's recent activity. The second part of the screen highlights your options. From there, you can see more details about in-app trackers, how many are blocked or active, or choose whether or not to allow trackers in each application using our Tracker Manager feature. It works as a network filter that allows you to selectively disable trackers or completely turn them off, preventing you from being profiled on the internet. You can choose to share your real location or pretend you are somewhere else. This feature adds even more security to your online protection as your real location won't be exposed on the internet. You can also choose to share your real IP address or hide it. By hiding your IP address, your connection will be routed through random public servers and you become anonymous on the internet. You will also have the option to select a country from which your internet activity must seem originated from or even choose which applications need to use the settings. And finally, you can use the privacy widget to quickly turn on your privacy settings with only one click. Advanced privacy is a great complement to the privacy score in App Launch, and it helps you to protect your online privacy even more. Thanks, Odd. Advanced privacy looks stunning, and we are sure many of you will find it really useful. So far, we've spoke at length about smartphones and what comes in EOS, but Marina is more than that. Alexei, can you tell us a bit more about options for the cloud? Sure, Veronica. We felt that if we stopped at the operating system, we were leaving many users without options for their email and cloud storage, but to use proprietary solutions like Google Docs or Microsoft Office 365. So our efforts to bring people to a more privacy-friendly environment would be in vain. Here is where Marina Cloud comes in. Marina Cloud is your personal email account, your agenda and contacts, your drive on the cloud, and your online office suite, all combined in one single service, simple to use. Marina Cloud is powered by proven open source software like Nextcloud and OnlyOffice. Last but not least, we have great features to keep your email address private, like hide my email. 
Marina Cloud is built on the same privacy by design principles as EOS. We don't scan your data, we don't log your app usage, we don't sell your data, we don't use ads in our online services. Marina Cloud is seamlessly integrated with EOS, so you can synchronize easily data from your cloud to the phone. And while Marina Cloud has been developed as an extension of EOS, this online suite can also be used without EOS, directly from your computer or from another smartphone. Marina Cloud is really simple to use online. So just browse to marina.io to access your personal and private space. From the home page, you can access directly all the available services, email, calendar, contacts, pictures and videos, your files, and much more. Let's explore my drive. It is where all my valuable files are stored. It's also where all my documents are synced with my phone. And if I've synced my marina.io account on my phone, I will find it there. In the email tab, I will find all my marina.io emails. Same thing for the calendar, the task, and the notes tab. If I select the photo tab, I will see all the pictures I took from my Marina smartphone that have synced automatically to my cloud space. Marina.io acts as a backup to the cloud tool if I have selected the option in EOS. There's also the option to access additional apps directly in Marina.io, like our Office Suite. With your Marina.io account, you have access to a powerful suite of online tools to create, edit and share documents, spreadsheets and even presentation slides. Everything is compatible with Microsoft Office formats, which makes a great alternative to Google Docs or Office 365. Let's say I need to create a document where I will write a summary to share later with the Marina team. I can simply select Docs in the menu and start typing. As the Office Suite is online, my document is directly saved to my marina.io cloud space, and I can share it easily with anyone, just with one click. And finally, let's look at Hi My Email. Instead of using your personal email address when you fill up a form on the web or share your details with someone you don't know, you can share an email alias so your real email address isn't exposed. To enable the Hi My Email function and filter your emails to a specific folder, it only takes a few clicks. First, let's create the folder where the email sent to the alias will be located. To do this, open the email app in your cloud space on marina.io, click on the settings button at the bottom, click on create folder and give the folder a name you can remember. Let's call it hide my email. Click create. Then click the back button. Now let's find out your hide my email address. Click on your mail account icon on the top right, then settings. Click on Hide My Email on the left. Then click Copy button to copy your alias address. Now go back to the Email app in the Email tab. Click on the Person icon on the top right, then Settings. Click Filters on the left, then Add a filter. Give a name to the filter in the conditions. Select Recipient, Contains, and paste your Hide My Email address. In Actions, select Move To and the folder you created for these emails. Click Done, Save and Back. Now email sent to your Hi My Email address will be collected in the folder you created. We hope you will enjoy Morena.io. Back to you, Veronica. Thank you, Alexey. As you could see from Odd, Gail and Alexey, Marina is a complete ecosystem centered around you and your privacy. If I summarize what we have showcased so far, Marina comes with EOS, an open source to Google mobile operating system, a set of open source default apps to help you get started with your phone, app lounge from where you can download your favorite apps and vet them for privacy, advanced privacy to manage in-app trackers, hide your location and your internet address, and finally marina.io your personal email address and private cloud. Alexey, could you explain how anyone can get a Marina smartphone? Sure. To launch a range of Marina smartphones, we took a pragmatic approach. We thought it was better to launch our first handsets partnering with recognized brands, especially brands sharing like us the ambition to bring better ethics in the marketplace. One of these brands is Fairphone, the Dutch social enterprise building a market for ethical phones and motivating the industry to act more responsibly. 
We have been partnering with Fairphone for a few years now, and we think it is a great match for Marina phones. But let's hear it directly from them. We asked Fairphone CEO Ewa Hawens to tell us a bit more about Fairphone and why this collaboration between Marina and Fairphone makes sense. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Eva Gouwens. I am the CEO of Fairphone. And Fairphone is a Dutch purpose-driven smartphone company. And we develop and sell our own modular, long-lasting and highly repairable Fairphones. And we do that with care for people and planet, meaning that we also include responsibly sourced materials and try to improve the working conditions in the supply chain. So, as a summary, I dare to say that this is the most sustainable phone in the world. And then why is it such a good idea to collaborate with Mirena? Well, there's quite some common ground in the values of our two organizations. We both strive to bring more ethics to this industry. And whether that is about privacy or about longevity and sustainability, there's quite some common ground. Plus, what is really important to me is that Murena, or EOS, actually is also really user-friendly and therefore reaches a broad group of users and it's accessible for a broad group of, of users. So I would say combining the benefits of a privacy OS with the benefits of a sustainable smartphone, that's a winning combination. And I would like to take the opportunity as well to congratulate you with your uh, the launch of your new brand and EOS. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the launch and looking forward to keep on working together. Many thanks, Eva, for these kind words and for the Fairphone team for your trust. We're very pleased with this collaboration and we look forward to strengthen it further in the future. So let's dip into the Marina smartphone range. Our first model is the Marina Fairphone 4. It's the first 5G privacy-conscious and sustainable phone. Like on Fairphone devices, it is built to last with its modular and repairable design. It features a removable 3905 mAh rechargeable battery. You can swap out the battery or the display on your own. No part of the phone is glued shut, so you can choose to easily repair it yourself with a standard screwdriver. The Marina Fairphone 4 features a dual 48 megapixel rear camera and a 25 megapixel selfie camera for great pictures and videos. This phone is the first modular phone with an IP rating. This rating provides information about the protection of the device against the intrusions of solid, like dust, and liquids, such as water. With an IP54 rating, your Marina Fairphone 4 is protected from dust ingress and protected from rain. If you want a future pro phone, and if you are already Needing 5G, this is your perfect companion. This phone comes in two variants and two colors. 6GB of RAM with 128GB of storage, or 8GB of RAM with 256GB of storage. The Marina Fairphone 4 is available today from marina.com and ships in Europe, UK and Switzerland. The next device is the Marina Fairphone 3 Plus. This phone is a 4G smartphone and has been recognized as a trailblazer in the industry. It features two camera modules with 48 megapixel camera and 16 megapixel selfie camera for high quality pictures and videos. And it is made of 40% recycled plastics. It features a removable 3000 mAh rechargeable battery. And with its replaceable modules, you can repair it yourself also with a single screwdriver. The Marina Fairphone 3 Plus is available today from marina.com and ships in Europe, UK and Switzerland. Today, we're also super excited to introduce our first Marina branded smartphone, the Marina One. Gail, can you tell us more about the Marina One? The Marina One is a 4G LTE smartphone. It comes with a gorgeous 6.5 inches display. To give the best viewing experience, we chose a punch hole camera design for the selfie camera. This phone comes with a 25 megapixel front camera for great selfies and three rear cameras for awesome shots with 48, 8 and 5 megapixel sensors. It is powered by an octa-core processor and 4 GB of RAM for a smooth performance. With 128 GB of built-in storage, 
and the option to expand using a SD card, you will have enough space to store all your pictures and other files. The phone also features a 4500 mAh battery, so you will have enough power to go through your busy days without charging. And finally, it comes with a dual SIM, so you can enjoy two phone lines with one single phone. The Morena One is compatible with European carriers and most carriers in the US and in Canada. The Morena One will launch in June. It will ship in the USA, Canada, Europe, United Kingdom and Switzerland. Every Morena smartphone is available at morena.com. Every phone comes with all the great features we have introduced before EOS, App Launch, Advanced Privacy, and the Marina.io Cloud. We are thrilled about these smartphones and we are looking forward to seeing you with one in your hand. Before we close, I would like to thank every Marina employee for their hard work and commitment. We have a great team spread across the globe, working hard to come up with great products and services. I am humbled and proud to lead such a team, and I cannot thank them enough for their hard work. I would also like to thank all the volunteers and contributors who have helped us testing and improving the operating system, the applications and the services. It is fantastic to see this vibrant community come together and strive. Today, you have heard about what makes Marina different and special, how we challenge ourselves to protect your data and keep it safe. This is the beginning of a new era and we hope you will be part of it very soon. Thanks again for your attention. Thank you, Gail, Odd, Alexi and Handros for this complete overview. As a reminder, all the phones and services can be found at marina.com. We thank you again for your attention. We received a lot of questions during this live stream. It is time for a Q&A. First question that comes from our chat. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I hope now you can hear me <laughs> and we are ready to start our Q&A session. And uh, just to remind, we are back here with Gail, Odd and Alexi and also Handros who is connected with us um, uh, directly from Brazil. So he's in remote uh, connection. And uh, we are ready right now, I hope, uh, for the first question. Uh, that comes from our chat, uh, from Arpadar, uh, saying, is there any point in combining VPN and the new privacy settings? Or is the new settings sufficient? So I know that Gail wanted to answer this question. So yes, thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Um, so to answer this question, um, the, the basic uh, answer is that we think that uh, um, what we have put in the V1 uh, with advanced privacy is enough, uh, you know, to fake your activity on internet. Uh, so you don't really have to mix a VPN and what we offer in uh, advanced privacy uh, uh, in EOS uh, V1, um, especially because with a VPN you will send all your traffic uh, through a single IP. And with advanced privacy, uh, you have more granularit granularity. Um, uh, you can fine tune which application uh, can fake uh, your IP and which one you do don't want to fake your IP. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, we'll have the second question that uh, mm, Hondros will answer, I suppose, because it concerns uh, design. So the question comes from Rick uh, from our chat, uh, who asks, uh, will the camera app will be redesigned? 
So, uh, Andros, do you have a comment about it? Sure. Uh, can you uh, hear me all right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Can. Awesome. Um, yeah, the, the camera was uh, redesigned, actually. Uh, so, good news for you, Rick. Um, we updated UI for a lot of apps. This includes the camera. Uh, we've been uh, wanting to update the camera for a long time. And uh, for those of you who are long-term users of uh, EOS, uh, just install the latest update and you'll be able to see the new camera. Uh, the camera was uh, simplified. Uh, now it looks more harmonic with uh, better icons and everything. Uh, looks more um, coherent in terms of uh, user experience uh, in comparison to uh, the other apps. Um, yeah, we put a lot of uh, effort in, in the new camera and we hope you like it so you can take uh, beautiful pictures <laughs> with the new camera. Thank you, Andros. Um, so uh, we can move to the next question that comes from Twitter from Alti. Uh, what about uh, VO, Wi-Fi and Volti? Um, that's yeah, I can answer that one. Can so uh, yeah, so VOLT and VO Wi-Fi are very important because they are uh, designed to improve the experience on, on the phone. They will enable you to get um, the best signal and HD voice, for example, for your calls. Uh, so VOLT and VO Wi-Fi, it's a combination of things. Uh, the operating system needs to support it. The, the, um, the, uh, the actual phone needs to support it. And so what we've, been, what we've been working on is to ensure that we can support it for most devices we have with the US. Mm -hmm. And so all the devices we sell, uh, the Marina smartphones, uh, come with VOLT and, and VO Wi-Fi. And we are trying to uh, make also all the other phones compatible with these standards, as especially as 3G and 2G networks are deprecated by the carriers. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Alexi. Sure. Uh, so um, well, we'll try to move on, so we'll try to uh, answer m more questions possible. So another one comes from Telegram about uh, default applications from uh, Alan Dur, uh, saying when we will be able to uninstall the default applications. Uh, well, uh, who wants to answer this uh, question? I can. Oh? I can answer okay. it. <laughs> That's good. Um, in the V1, I know many of you will be happy to hear that uh, We've made sure that you can remove the weather widget if you want to, whereas it's been redesigned too, so uh, maybe you won't, you won't, won't, won't <laughs> you won't, don't, won't want, <laughs> sorry, to do so. Um, and uh, we have also uh, added two more widgets you can remove as well. About the default applications, we are not there yet, but we are working on it and uh, expect to be able to do so for the end of the year. Okay, that's really impressive. It's a good a good project anyway. Uh, so, and another one also f goes from Twitter from uh, Francisco, uh, who says, uh, "Do you sell a phone or an OS? If it is an OS, how can you use it to replace our Android or iOS?" So, I think uh, this is certainly the question for Gail. <laughs> do you think? All right. So, do we sell a phone or an OS? Um, actually, our business model, because we have a business model, we have to have a business model, is to sell smartphones and online services well, with the Marina Cloud. So what we do is an operating system that runs on some smartphones and we sell some smartphones. So we sell both. But in the meantime, you can uh, download for free the operating system because it is open source and you can download and install this uh, to an existing smartphone. Uh, we support a range of more than 200 smartphones right now. So for people who have, um, I mean, um, some skills, some technical skills, uh, they can install by themselves. But we had a lot of demand for pre-installed smartphones. Uh, so um, today, um, I mean, and as we are moving towards a larger audience, most people uh, prefer uh, purchasing a Marina smartphone with EOS already installed 
it's yeah. far more easier than installing by the mm, oneself. Uh, For sure. Right. So we do sell uh, smartphones that are already running EOS, oh. but the EOS itself stays free for everyone. Yeah, so and just one additional note, um, you cannot install EOS on iOS or on an iPhone uh, uh, because iPhone is a locked e ecosystem and uh, you cannot install this on iPhone. But, but for most uh, Android uh, smartphones, it's, it's okay, it should work. So that would be a challenge for yeah. iOS. <laughs> Uh, so um, let's move on to another question, uh, right? So uh, another one comes from Pierre from our chat. Um, when is uh, the easy installer for the Fairphone 4 coming out? I can answer that one <laughs> if you want. Uh, very good question, Pierre. So the easy installer uh, is a program we have developed to simplify the installation process on a compatible device. Uh, it's, a it's a software that's available on Windows, on Linux, and soon on Mac OS. And the idea behind the Easy Installer is that with a few clicks, you connect your phone to the, um, to your, to the computer and you can get EOS installed very simply. Um, and so it's available for most of the stable devices we have today and the Marina smartphones. And indeed, the plan is that we, we're going to bring the Easy Installer to the Fairphone 4. Uh, the plan is by the, uh, by the end of the month. Um, so if you have a Fairphone 4 of Pierre and if you want to install EOS on it, you should be able to do so with the easy installer very soon. Okay. Because yeah, it, it, is, it is true that we had a lot of questions about uh, easy installer Indeed. for Fairphone 4. <laughs> it's not surprisingly. So we have another question that's quite interesting. Uh, so uh, of course, we're not the, the only one who, do, uh, who try to do something mm, better in this industry. So um, not surprising that we have this question right now from uh, L to B. W. Uh, how is Marina compared to Graphene OS and Calyx OS? So <laughs> you want me to <laughs> Any <answer>? volunteers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, actually, uh, we don't do Graphene OS or Calyx OS, so I can answer only for EOS. I know what we do. Um, I know about uh, the other ones, but I'm not sure exactly what they do. Uh, I think that the first one is uh, uh, much more into, you know, um, are they need security and uh, and uh, the, the the second one is looking more like us. But uh, I think um, what what makes us um, different and special mm -hmm. uh, is that uh, we will have a plan to 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 have a consistent product. You mean in terms of user experience and um, um, we don't want to just uh, you know um, uh, use things uh, that we take here and here and and just okay it works and it's okay. No, no. We go um, really m deeper um, in the user experience, and uh, we try to bring much more in innovation. To uh, I think that uh, advanced privacy is really uh, a proof that uh, uh, mm -hmm. we want more in terms of, of privacy, not just you know degoogling. Uh, it's not enough. Uh, that there is much more to do uh, with uh, controlling the trackers, uh, controlling uh, your IP address on internet. Um, controlling your location if you don't want to be located. So we really try to make a consistent product and we also have the cloud part because we think that the OS is not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, today, if you want to have a, a digital life, uh, you always use online services. Uh, and if, if you just use, you know, uh, uh, Office uh, uh, 365 or uh, Google Docs, uh, it's just <laughs> reduced to zero. Our effort would be reduced to zero. So we have to, to make this effort to, to bring um, a usable cloud uh, with many online services yeah. uh, where you can store your documents, edit your documents, your picture, your etc. And something that is linked with the operating system. This, this means that uh, when you take a picture, you are happy to have a, a backup online and uh, then you can retrieve later or synchronize on another device. So I think the, um, we, we really want to uh, just not just solving, you know, part of the problem. We, we want to offer a, a complete uh, solution mm -hmm. that makes sense for a large audience. Of course. Thanks a lot for this uh, complete uh, answer. So uh, yeah, abso absolutely. We want to go deeper in this uh, in, in the search for uh, for the solutions for to make people covered from everywhere their ex experience. 
So another quite a tricky question, I think, um, uh, from Pascal from our chat. Uh, could you install official bank account apps? Um, uh, so I can your odd, you can, yes, you I can, can answer, answer this question. Um, yes, we can install official uh, bank account apps. Uh, some of them will work perfectly. Uh, some of them it will be uh, more complicated. Uh, it's not uh, all up to us. Uh, it's because every bank has its own, has its own uh, rules, security rules. Okay. And uh, as it's sec security rules, uh, they are not open to share it with us. So we, uh, we try to, we do our best. We try, we, when we, someone reports a um, bank uh, app or another app not working, uh, we try to find a way to make it work. So what is the best uh, way to do when uh, I cannot uh, download my favorite app or when it doesn't work? So um, do I have to report it on, on GitLab or somewhere? Yeah, you can report it on GitLab. Uh, search First search if the ticket isn't already opened or closed because someone has found a, f a solution and it's coming in an update. And okay. uh, if you don't find a ticket about it, yes, feel free to, uh, to create one. And I'd like to add something uh, on this yes. topic. Uh, the first one is that uh, with the V1, the support has improved uh, a lot uh, for many applications, mm -hmm. including bank uh, applications. Oh. So I think that most of the time now, mm, it's supposed to work, actually. And in case it wouldn't work, uh, yes, mm, uh, users uh, um, are can contact us uh, very easily, uh, I either from uh, our social um, um, channels or uh, to the help desk, um, yeah. simply the help desk, yeah. Great. So we can move on to, to the next question. What do you think? Uh, well, um, another one goes about um, ProtonMail. Is it available in AppLounge? The question from Mathieu. Uh, I think I can answer <laughs> this one. Yes, <laughs> it is available in AppLounge, <laughs> like uh, many other applications. Yeah. and. Uh, we leave the choice to access other services. If people prefer to use Tutanota, ProtonMail, or they're welcome to download these apps and install them on the US, there's no, there's no limitation there. Okay. So the next one uh, goes from Roland. Uh, uh, will the Samsung Galaxy S20 support it in the near future? Who wants to answer this one? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can if Galaxy. you want. So the, the, um, we are trying to expand the amount of phones we, we support. I, th I believe today, if I'm not mistaken, there are 240 smartphones uh, supported with EOS. Um, we are looking to, to add the S20. Uh, it's part of the uh, devices we are often requested. Uh, so I don't have a, an exact timing to share now, but most likely by the end of the year, it's going to be it's going to be supported. Um, it's a smartphone when there is quite a lot of work for the developers to, to uh, make EOS fully uh, compatible with the phone. Uh, so that's why it's taking a bit more time, but we should have it uh, in our range by the end of the year. Okay. Great. Uh, we also have collected several questions before our event. So one of them uh, was on Twitter from Leon, who asked us, uh, when will you add Korean to e uh, Gail? Yeah, um, so Korean is supposed to be already in the core operating system. Uh, I have to check, but uh, I think it's already there. Um, then you have some applications, uh, like the applications that we develop, mm. our launcher, advanced privacy, app launch, and Korean is not yet uh, supported in those applications. But the good news is that EOS is an open source project, <laughs> and everybody can uh, contribute, contribute uh, some source code and some new languages. So if a team of Korean dev developers and translators want to provide the translations for uh, the software we develop, they are warmly welcome to do this and to join us. Mm, that's true. That's true. We already have a really uh, uh, amazing uh, team of translators who help us uh, on a daily basis almost. And uh, we're really thankful for all their hard work and help. Uh, I think without them, sure. uh, our work would be quite uh, uh, more complicated, we'll say. Indeed. <laughs> so the next uh, next question. Um, in the app security rating 
also based is the ah, sorry is the app security rating also based on Exodus privacy it's from Steve so th I don't I'm not sure the security rating is the correct uh, yeah. I mean we we call this maybe the privacy, privacy, score. privacy score. Privacy score. Privacy score yeah. uh, so yes, the privacy score is based on Exodus privacy analysis, and um, and um, we we give uh, this uh, analysis this analysis of how many trackers are uh, in applications uh, people are looking for and want to mm -hmm. install, and we compute the privacy score based on uh, those um, um, number of trackers on the permissions, and now. With uh, advanced privacy, you can see um, also in real time uh, which trackers um, are enabled, and uh, and you can decide to cut those trackers if you want. That's the All right. good news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, this <laughs> next question is really funny. So um, a good question. I really, I would really like to know this answer too uh, from Pixel Code. <laughs> Where can we get those awesome Marina T-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I think we can thank Randros uh, for the design uh, and <laughs> Randros and the design team because uh, he's not working alone on those uh, designs. But uh, regarding the T-shirts, uh, we don't have short-term plans, but. Uh, if we have enough demand, uh, probably that we uh, can definitely think of yes, something. Sure. Something maybe uh, Andros have something to add. What do you think about the t-shirts? <laughs> no, uh, that's it. Uh, very soon, you guys are going to have uh, t-shirts available for you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you, Andros, for <laughs> for this uh, straight question, straight answer. So uh, the next question comes from Mikhail. Uh, will EOS be ported to desktop systems? All right, so uh, I can I pick this one. Um, so um, if you take the EOS uh, as we develop it, uh, uh, it's a fork of uh, the Android operating system. Uh, so right now, it's it has already been ported to uh, I'm, I think one laptop, um, I think it's a Pinebook, something like this. Yeah, I think it's two, the Pinebook and the Olimax. Pinebook and the Olimax, I don't two the laptops. Exactly, um, and we are currently thinking about the opportunity to port to more laptops and how we want to do this. Uh, because um, without entering too much into details, there is a question whether we should um, use the, the Android core operating system for this, or if we should maybe rather use uh, a Linux base that would uh, ensure compatibility with Android apps. Okay. Uh, but today we have not decided yet, but uh, for sure we have some plans in the future for that. For that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Gail. Um, mm, we move to another one. Um, not sure, I'm sorry how it is pronounced, your name, uh, Lee Kui. I hope. Uh, do you have tools available to make the transfer from Google to Marina smooth? Uh, I can answer this one if you want. Yeah. Uh, very good question. So we do, um, as you know, Marina Cloud is based on Nextcloud, and uh, we give a shout out to the awesome work that they're that they're doing. And there is actually great tools developed by Nextcloud to allow this uh, this transition, this migration let's say, from uh, external accounts. So you can actually extract directly, um, connect your Google account to uh, your Nextcloud account, so your Marina Cloud, and basically migrate all of the data to, uh, uh, to your account within a few clicks. So again, the idea is to uh, make things uh, simple and not a, uh, uh, a barrier uh, to come to join us. So and it's already available in your Marina Cloud, uh, in your Marina Cloud account. Uh, and so if you don't find it, reach out to us and we'll, we'll explain. All right. You have nothing to add um, concerning this question? No? <laughs> we can move to yeah. another one. All right. <laughs> uh, let's do it. So another question comes from the also from the chat, from James. Is EOS built on Android? If yes, how do you stop the EOS calls to Google service? Okay, so we are going uh, deep in <laughs> 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 the <laughs> low level. <laughs> Um, there are, um, you know, if you look at the source code of the whole operating system, uh, from the bottom to the, uh, you know, 
uh, end user software, etc. Uh, in Android, there are many places where the system can send some data to Google. So this has been uh, a lot of work for us to figure out uh, which part of the system would send some data to Google servers. And uh, I think we have found most of those places and we have fixed uh, all of those issues. Uh, so the, the, this can start with, you know, uh, when, you, when you switch on your, your smartphone, uh, there is a connectivity check to, to ensure that you have uh, access to the network, to internet. And uh, at this stage already, uh, there is a ping to a Google server uh, to, to know if you have access to internet. So this is the kind of thing uh, we have uh, suppressed. Mm. And, um, and we have replaced by uh, some uh, uh, equivalent and, um, uh, features. And uh, that's the reason why we have um, uh, removed all the Google Play Services uh, software. And we replace this with another open source software that does the same. And uh, we don't uh, put the official Google uh, Play Store, for instance. We have our own software to access uh, um, uh, Android uh, mobile um, applications. So, um, I mean, Android is an open source operating system that was created before it was purchased by Google. And uh, the core operating system remains open source. And so mm -hmm. you can modify it and, and you can um, um, make it more ethical. And that's what we do uh, yeah. actually with uh, EOS. All right. So we, we will try to go forward <laughs> with another questions. So uh, next one is from L <laughs> uh, LH. Uh, does the advanced privacy settings block the trackers from third installed apps? I can answer this one. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure about it. <laughs> um, yes, uh, once you have uh, enabled uh, advanced privacy, you can uh, all that in the app you have installed on your phone or you install data, will be, uh, all their trackers will be blocked. And if, if you choose to let some go by because uh, it helps the uh, application works better or for any other reason, you can uh, activate, uh, deactivate the blocking for this tracker specifically. You can uh, also do it for uh, the, all the trackers in one application. And uh, if you, for any reason, you need to all the apps to uh, send trackers to, you can disable uh, advanced privacy. So can, to sum up, you can do it uh, on a high level. You can block everything. Then you can go in the app and uh, allow everything or block everything. Or in, in the app, it's um, by app, you can deactivate or activate trackers specifically. So you can fine tune uh, how the trackers access uh, uh, have access. So you control it yourself in the... Yes. That's a full control yeah. and it's needed yeah. because in some case, uh, just to be transparent, uh, when you block all trackers from one application, in, in some case, uh, this will make the application uh, uh, have a you know, strange behavior or something. Mm -hmm. So you can fine tune uh, the settings and uh, we hope that we can uh, eventually come with uh, some uh, default settings that will uh, work um, um, at For all applications. Uh, first use um, for all apps, but uh, it's a, a lot of work and uh, probably we need uh, a lot of contributions for the, from the community to, to achieve this. Right. And yeah. I, I'll, add, I'll add that um, uh, we've, uh, when available, uh, linked the name of the tracker to Exodus Privacy Analysis so the user can know what the tracker does or what is uh, which is what? Which, what is this description? Its description, so it's easier to understand what you're blocking or allowing. Okay. So let's uh, let's move on. Um, another question from Telegram. Uh, what about e on tablets? No, this one is for Alexi. <laughs> <laughs> The device guy. <laughs> uh, very good question. So we, we have a lot of requests for uh, EOS on tablets. In fact, the OS is available for a few tablets today. Um, in the future, we would also like to have a Marina tablet available. As you can imagine, it's, uh, it's quite a lot of work to get there. Uh, we need to ensure that the, uh, the launcher, everything that makes the operating system work, um, has the same experience on the tablet, which is a completely different uh, base than, than from a phone. Um, so that's 
that's our that's our ambition. I can't give any timing now, but if all goes well, then there will be a Marina tablet in the future. All right. Um, okay, we move on again. Uh, another question from also from Telegram from Jean P. Um, will there be a find my e-phone, well, Marina phone <laughs> function, and uh, or can we lock a stolen phone from eCloud? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, the answer is yes. It's uh, it's already in the roadmap actually. Uh, actually, it, it should have been in the V1, but uh, it was uh, too late. Uh, but uh, it will be again in development, uh, and uh, probably it will be pushed in a, in an. Uh, um, further update uh, this year. But, but that, that is a, a highly requested uh, feature, actually, uh, both uh, Find My uh, Phone um, and uh, on a voluntary basis, obviously, and, um, and locking uh, a stolen phone uh, remotely, uh, that's uh, something that uh, we are asked uh, very often. Yeah, this is quite a can be a really useful tool, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so, um, Another question uh, from the chat from Netfly <coughs> uh, saying, is there a plan to provide a backup solution on desktop? Is it a backup solution on desktop? Uh, we have a, a backup uh, solution uh, ready, actually. Uh, we didn't have in enough time to push it to the V1, but it's, it's a similar answer of, uh, as the previous one, uh, we have a backup solution ready uh, to be rolled out, but it's uh, um, just a matter of few uh, updates again. Uh, but on the on desktop, I'm not sure to understand. I is it to um, to have the backup um, uh, copied to the the PC maybe or something like this? Uh, so maybe the backup. Uh, We'll rather go to the cloud, but there should be a way to have it on the store on the on the PC as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the next question is uh, is also quite interesting, I think, uh, from Raphael from our chat. Uh, would there be a way of testing the OS without replacing the current OS, or like the testing time when I before <coughs> installing a Linux distro? So, um, have a yeah, I can start and maybe if you want to. Sure. Um, um, there are many ways we can do this, and uh, for sure, we'd like to have a way to, to have users test the operating system without flashing their phone. Uh, so, probably uh, one thing we are going to put in place will be a, a kind of a emulator, online emulator that you can run in the browser mm -hmm. and where you can. Uh, have the basic features of EOS are running that you can try, uh, but the, the one interesting uh, feature would also to have uh, it as a virtual machine on your smartphone mm -hmm. that could cohabit with uh, an existing operating system. But that's another project, and uh, probably it's not for uh, now. Not for <laughs> now. Okay. So I think we have time only for the last question, I suppose. Um, so, um, uh, so um, mm, which one? So yeah, we have a question about uh, our uh, from Ramesh. Uh, are we planning to launch the Marina phone in India? Very good question. I can answer <laughs> that one. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, so we would love to sell Marina smartphones in India. India is a fantastic market. We we have there's a ton of actually uh, also of developers and open source contributors in India. Uh, so this would be fantastic for us if we could reach that market. Uh, logically, the India market has its own specificities. And right now, let's say that we're more oriented towards, um, towards Europe, uh, the US, Canada. Um, so I can't give dates now, but that's indeed one of the, uh, one of the plans we have for the long run. Ideally, a Marina smartphone should be available everywhere. Uh, but for India specifically, we want to make sure we do it with uh, the, the right way and potentially the right local partners. Uh, so this will take a bit of time, but we would be pleased to actually uh, launch Marina smartphones in India. So stay tuned for that one. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, do we do we want to wrap up or? I think it is time. I think we actually have a, a lot of questions remaining, but uh, we're quite run of 
time right now. So we really thank you a lot for all these questions. And if you didn't get your answer, please uh, contact us via marina.com or uh, on our social media. And we absolutely will answer all the remaining questions. And uh, I hope really that you've enjoyed our uh, live stream event. And um, thank you again for joining us live. And uh, we hope to see you soon. And this is the end of our live event. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.